Hey guys, how's it going? So this afternoon we're gonna be focusing on planting and I've got a gator full of plants. No real rhyme or reason. There's no theme to what we're planting today. It's just get through some of the plants we have left. And I'm excited about each one of these though because they're all really beautiful. You'll notice that we are in the back 40 of the new property because that's where we're gonna be planting the first tree, the heritage oak. And the reason why we're planting it back here is because it gets huge, 50 feet tall by 40 feet wide. There it is, looking like it already needs to be staked, staked up, just standing there. But you know what, this is what sold me. Right here, the acorns. Aaron loves big trees, so he was really interested in this one. Now this one is not supposed to hold its leaves for the winter. It turn, they turn yellow, which they're starting to do right now, um, and then they drop them. The other reason why we decided to put it back here, other than its massive size, because it's gonna make a great backdrop tree, is that all the acorns that it does produce, they can drop anywhere they want. They're not gonna be on a lawn or a walkway or in anybody's way back here which makes it kind of perfect. So if you are picking a tree that maybe makes a little bit more of a mess like this one, if you can put it somewhere where it's just not gonna bug you, that's kind of ideal. And Aaron is on his way out here. I think he was gonna grab an auger uh, to get the hole dug out here. It should be pretty soft though. It's been raining this morning. You can see the sky is still overcast. It's a beautiful day. Let me show you the other things we've got going. We've got one more Asian moon buddleia, butterfly bush. We're going to be finishing a hedge that I planted earlier this summer. I was able to pick this one up, oh boy, probably a month ago. Just haven't had a chance to get it in the ground. We've got, oh, this is one of my favorites, you guys, luminary opalescence flocks. Now these grow like 30 to 32 inches tall and they spread out, you know, like clump out quite wide. How wide? Like 30 inches, I think. 28, very close. And we do have these up in the Versailles garden. I'll show them to you. I think they still are in bloom. And they're such good performers for us that I was really excited to get my hands on a few more to tuck in. They just bring this pink sparkly vibe to a flower bed. And these do not get powdery mildew. I've not had any issues with this variety at all. And then we have a vanilla twist red bud which I don't have a spot quite picked out for it, but when I saw it, I just had to pick it up because I hadn't seen this particular variety. It uh, grows 12 feet tall by eight feet wide with kind of that weeping appearance there or weeping structure. White blooms in the spring. Here comes Aaron. Now, do you guys remember when we had power poles? There were three in the South Garden and then this one here. What year did we remove those power poles? Was it 2019 or 2020 probably? It wasn't that long ago. It was like, was it three years? I, yeah, it was right after we, it was one of the first things we did after we finalized purchasing the South Garden. Had we even finalized? Yeah, we did. We, we did. finalized. Yeah. yeah, that would have been <laughs> a I remember dumb move. That was the weirdest thing when uh, <laughs> we were like already putting in the fence before we had signed papers. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I sure hope this thing goes through. Because <laughs> our neighbor was cool about it, but you just never know if, you know, somebody at the city is going to say, oh, but this, or right. at the county level say, but you can't do this, or, uh -huh. you know, you just, I don't, you know, until you sign, you just don't know. You don't know. Yeah. The other thing that I'm so glad we did, and this was one of your, you know, Aaron is the king of planning ahead and like putting a lot of thought into infrastructure. And he thought, well, if we ever did have the opportunity to buy the land I'm standing on right now, we should just go ahead while they're out here and get that fourth one yeah. taken out. I'm so glad you did that. Which seemed really odd at the time because we were essentially burying power lines on other people's property. Uh huh. Just in the hope. <laughs> <laughs> and that, we that would, one day we might own it. We might benefit from it. Yeah, we just figured that at that time it would probably be less expensive while they had all the equipment out here just to go ahead and take this one extra one out rather than have them come back out and do it like a second phase of it. It probably would have been way more expensive. So anyway, I'm so thankful for that. And I'm glad our neighbors were, I mean, we paid for it. So they were amenable to the idea. I think it's alluring to have any power pole taken out of a property, I would imagine. So anyway, we're gonna decide placement on this oak tree. And and this one, you like it where it's at? Yeah, does that work? Well, I think so. We're gonna, <laughs> it's like got a definite lean. Well, Look at it, like it's, Face it toward the wind. Oh, worse. It does have a lean, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. It's kind of, it's like almost whip Well, if we face style. it toward the wind. You need to do a little bit more clockwise, I think. Yeah. No. A little bit less. There. Right? I don't Usually know. come from the south. I think it comes this way, doesn't it? It comes from the, from the Wahis, right? Like oh, south, yeah, you're right. south, what is that, west? I don't know. It'll straighten itself out. 
That looks good. So we do intend you guys on, we're gonna clean up this border a little bit. I like the wild nature of it, but you know, there's some dead things in there. There's a dead tree in there. We're gonna just go through that eventually and kind of root out the dead stuff. Um, and then we're gonna be planting more evergreens and things like that back here, just to kind of amp up the hedge. Okay, we're gonna get this planted high and then we'll move on to the next thing. How much rain did we get? Look at how look at how puffy this is. It was like just the very tippy top sur soil surface yeah. that was wet. Well, I think you need to go a little, a little bit more. We're gonna bring the soil up around here. Are we? Yeah, and I'll you get should. a I'll get a bucket load of compost. Okay, uh, we need to go grab some land and see. I forgot oh, to yeah. grab that. Grab some compost. I'll meet you over there. Okay. You want to hop on, bud? I got some little. Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get on there. <laughs> I know it's really messy. Did you get your shoes all muddy? Oh yeah, I got my shoes all muddy. I'm Daddy's waiting for me over there, so I gotta I gotta run, bud. I get on too. Okay, you gonna run? Oh yeah, you got the real shoes on, good. No sandals today. Bud, why don't you just tiptoe on and sit in the chair so that daddy knows where you're at so he doesn't have to worry with the tractor, okay? Just tiptoe and then sit in the chair and put your don't put your feet on the ground. That's easy enough. There you go. I don't like it. That is not too deep. Honey. I don't like it. I didn't even hollow out the bottom. I just made the hole wider. <laughs> uh, <gasps> I think it, it might be okay. Somehow all the other plants that we've planted, that I've planted, are still alive. <laughs> but we're done digging right here. You can use my phone. Is this the acorn tree? This is the acorn tree. It's called an oak tree, bud. is all tucked into its pile of compost. <laughs> you know, the wind will take care of some of it, yeah. but yeah, for sure. Let it go, let's see. Whoop. <laughs> it's just yeah. a little weak. Yep, I think that's gonna be a great tree right there though. Let's go grab a, um, a tree stick real quick. Okay. How's that? It looks like it could pull on it a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it could yeah, be a little bit pulled. That looks okay. good. Boom. Okay, first one is completely done. Staked up, it looks really good. Let me show you from the side. Looking much better, Erin. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited for that. It's gonna be perfect back here. Okay, so we are going to find a spot for the red bud and then plant the three Spartan junipers, I think, next. Okay, we've got the three junipers loaded up and we're not sure exactly how we're gonna place them except for we think we're gonna do it between these two. We've got the sweet gum and the birch tree, so we've got two deciduous trees. It would be nice to have something evergreen in the gap and also um, different shapes. Like the Spartans will be very columnar and tight while these will be a little bit more fluffy. So we're just gonna mess around with placement a little bit. We'll get them planted and then we'll take a look.
Look at those layers, Aaron. Oh. We are missing some blue. Yes, we need blue for sure. Some Colorado blue spruce. Yes, we do like a nice big one right back here. Don't you think? I think so. I think there's enough space to get one back yeah. there. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, so we've got, you know, these two will be green in season, but this one has a lighter green leaf in the season than the Warpleston sweet gum, which that one will grow like, what did it say, 40 to 50 feet tall? Yeah. Something like that in like a 20 foot spread. Um, so we did place this one in front to where they'll probably touch, which we want in the end a little bit, like they'll overlap, but not a ton. Same with the uh, Spartan junipers. Those typically grow five to six feet wide and they'll be at the end of the canopy of this sweet gum. I don't know why I have a hard time remembering that. But if you take a look at the leaves here, let's just take one. They're so pretty. Got the red fall color. Then we'll have nice bright yellow vivid fall color here on this one. But look at the difference in texture right here. Even though they're both in the green tones during the season, they're so different that they'll still be set apart from one another. I love that. And you guys, all I have left are the little things. So Aaron, I think I can tackle these on my own. Okay. Before we leave this space, so I'm gonna run back over to the oak so I can show you what Aaron used to stake it up because we do use this. Actually, do we have one right here? Do we have a tree strap? Well, I just get these on Amazon. Yeah. They're just little like tree straps. So you just put this around the uh, trunk yeah. and then put your string through here so that the trunk is resting in something nice and soft that won't cut in. And then the string hooks there and then it goes down to a stake in the ground. Six months. Don't leave this on for more than six months. In fact, during the springtime, I don't even know if I would let it stay on. The, like this is a temporary solution. Sure. You should pull these off and restake them. I mean, like six months is the max. Like, like maybe every every three season. months, maybe pull it off, find a different location. And because otherwise, if you leave these on too long, it's amazing how quickly trees will grow around them and then you can't get them out. And well, I don't think that's good for the tree. And tree staking is just meant to be a temporary, like helping it along solution. Yeah. In the end, you shouldn't need to use it. We have a couple of these staked up like the Parosha tree because it's it's planted so high, it's kind of rocking in its hole or it was. No. Yeah, so it's not now, but the sweet gum hasn't. And I think that one was planted higher than anything. So, you know, every tree is a little bit different. And we typically don't stake things unless we see a lean, like with the oak. And now it's starting to get warm out here. Yeah, the sun is. is out. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to shed a layer. Um, so like the oak tree today, we staked up, we'll check it. We'll leave it through the winter yeah, because it's not putting on active growth right now. And we'll check it, you know, once it starts taking off in the spring. Uh, but yeah, the rest of these we just planted and then you just wait to see a lean. <laughs> and then you just uh, stake them up if they need it. And typically I would say, I don't know, most of them don't need to be staked that we plant. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe like 30% well, of the things that the we plant. Well, the autumn blaze for sure, because along the lane, like you were pretty diligent. Like you, re he really wanted them to be very straight and yeah. very- Even like, then, I don't think it was more than 30% that yeah. we staked. Yeah. So anyway, that's our philosophy on staking. Oh, look, there's a honeybee on the flocks in the gator. See, it knows what's good for it. Okay, now we will go get the rest of these planted and then I'll show you where they all ended up. All done planting and it's been such a pleasant afternoon. Oh my goodness. I wanna start here with the opalescence phlox. That's what I planted last and we'll work our way, work our way back. So we're here on the west side and I'll run up to Versailles to show you the ones I already have planted. Uh, but I did a little pocket of the opalescence right here. Now I had a fourth one that I tucked in back behind this Midnight Masquerade Penstemon 
because I didn't want to put a fourth one here because I didn't want it to look like they were all lined up in a row. So just a little grouping here and then draw some of that interest there. And then I do intend on putting some iris right in this area. And then I'll put something else that's lower in this space because I kind of want, as you walk up on this urn, just to see a little hint of the bottom. If I were to put the flox right here, that fourth one, and it grew up to its full size, it would block the entire bottom. And I don't mind it being blocked from one side, but I like to have a visual of it from at least one angle. But I think this is a really sweet color down in here. Behind it there are purple delphiniums we've got a pink mary rose which has a deeper pink flower than the opalescence you can see right here uh, we've got ladies mantle just in front of it and it should be a perfect stair step down because this one will not get quite as tall as that so oh and then the brandywine viburnum i was just noticing how beautiful well the leaves are one and these leaves will turn like the most beautiful red but the berries oh the pink and blue I just think it's so pretty oh and I am just so thrilled with the surefire white begonia you can kind of see it peeking from every little well around the maple trees it really has outdone itself and it's going to be very hard to not want to repeat this exact same plant next year it's just so controlled in its growth it doesn't get in the way of anything it doesn't bully anything out and it's gorgeous Okay, we're inside the loop in the South Garden. Look at the sparkling amethyst superbina. Oh my gosh. This is another one that's going to be really hard to not repeat because of just how it's performed in this area. There's the evening rose uh, hibiscus. We've got the limelight prime hydrangeas, which did all look like beautiful round shrubs all season until we got that last really heavy rainstorm and it just made them collapse. So I'm gonna just be doing a really nice prune job this winter to hopefully strengthen up their network of branching. But oh, this one, look at this. It's just, they're gorgeous. But the Asian moon Budlea went right there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and I just felt like I needed a sixth right behind here. It was just like kind of an empty spot. I am gonna be removing this because it's a little too jarring. I've got some Miss Ruby Budlea over here that have a very cool pink. This is a very warm tropical pink. Uh, and I kind of want to finish. I kind of want to keep going with the hydrangea hedge. So I think I'm going to be moving that. I know it looks glorious, but you know, it'll look glorious in another spot too. And these die all the way back down to the ground in the winter. So it's not like I'm, I don't know. <laughs> gonna lose a huge winter structure piece out here that would make me more sad so anyway that's the plan there but the bud layer really did help finish it off down there and I think that's gonna be really beautiful because these will grow you know five to seven feet tall so we'll have a nice tall bank of purple and then these usually grow I think what did the tag say like four to five ish but they'll be a little shorter than the bud layer. so we'll have a nice stair step down there Everything's looking really healthy. There's that cinnamon curls birch tree we planted not long ago and it's doing great. I swear that blue sky Serbian spruce has put on a tremendous amount of growth this year. I don't know, everything seems happy when it's overcast. <laughs> it all of a sudden doesn't look hot and dry and you know, harsh shadows. And I'll do one more spin by the trees out in the new property. Honestly, that red bud, when you're driving down the lane, it looks like it glows out here. But it'll be fun to have that trio and it won't be the only thing back there we'll have things planted in front so in the end it'll be just like green spires um, coming up from behind some other things and they'll tuck a little bit behind the canopies of the sweet gum and the birch tree that are right there we just want it to be a big old intermixed looking hedge of beautiful things and there's the heritage oak we've made it full circle now we don't have any water run to this tree yet so we will be hand watering this tree in this corner the other ones will be on drip but this one will hand water, but we'll only have to do it a handful of times before it goes dormant for the winter. Uh, and then we'll probably run a water line kind of from the same area that we have the, the drip tape, and we'll run one over to this tree in the spring. So that should work out just fine. And then we'll want to start in, you know, planting a little bit more in this corner anyway, probably next spring. And you guys, that is it for today's video. What a fun afternoon out here. It's just so pleasant in the fall. In October, October is generally a really nice month for us. I think if you look on on Google now let me Google it again um, if you search for your average first frost date 
I want to say ours is like October 4th or October 9th. Well, the National Garden Association said that our risk of frost begins around September 15th and by October 9th, you're almost certain to have received at least one frost event, which we're not even close this year. Let me look at Old Farmer's Almanac and see what they say. October 4th. Yeah, and our forecast is beautiful. Like our lowest temperature in the next 10 days is 42 and most of them are in the low 50s. So it's gonna continue to be a beautiful month and I'm here for it. That just means planting can go on longer, being out here can go on longer, flowers will go on longer, it's just great. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one, bye. All right guys, it's getting dark out here but I did realize that I completely forgot to bring you up here and show you the opalescence flocks. So you can see how tall the boxwood hedge is. I wanna say it's, hmm, I don't know, a little over two feet and the flocks just peeks over the top and while it's not in peak bloom it still does have some color and you know going in to october that's pretty awesome so that's the first batch of flocks i put in and then i did add a few more i think it was last year so they haven't fully matured and gotten tall yet but they will got some gorgeous oak leaf hydrangeas in between i just love them don't they just glow hey what are you what are you doing there girly we just got done playing around the pond Okay, say goodnight to everybody. Goodnight. Goodnight.